No way. This is me literally levitating a ball in midair. And today, I'm going to show you how I went from levitating a ball using only science to cracking the actual freaking code that professional magicians use to create mind-blowing magic tricks like this. But to do all of that, we first need to go back four months to when this all started. And that happened to be when I received this. The 10th Crunch Labs build box, the air ball. And I gotta tell you, this build is really mind-blowing because it's able to make this little ball float in the air by taking advantage of this really cool effect called the Kawanda effect, which I'll come back to later. But for now, let's go back to when I had just finished building the toy and I went straight to my desk where I started to ponder how it could be improved. And after some thinking and testing with the toy, I discovered something very interesting. If I took a mini frisbee from the first box, the disc launcher, and put it over the little hole that this mini fan collects air from, then I could adjust how high the ball would go by giving the fan more more or less air to use. And this was super cool because I had basically invented a remote control for the toy without using any fancy technology. But it did have one limitation as far as a remote control goes, which was it could only make the ball go lower than its natural height. So even though this is cool, I thought it would be a lot cooler if it could make the ball go higher. And so with this in mind, I set to work trying to figure out how this might be accomplished. So while I'm drawing off ideas, let's take a minute to discuss the science of how the airball toy actually works. How is it that this ball is basically able to sit in midair when there appears to be nothing supporting it? Well, looks can be deceiving because there actually is something that is keeping the ball in place. And this secret invisible force is the Kawanda effect that I mentioned earlier. Now, what the heck is the Kawanda effect, you ask? Well, to put it simply, it's when air moves around the curve of an object, much like water moves around the curve of a spoon. And the way this principle plays into the toy is very interesting because as the air from the fan comes out of the top, all those air molecules want to stick together, even if something is in their way. So if you put a ball in the middle of their path, then the air will move around the ball and meet up again on the other side. And if you think about it, the air going around the ball has to travel a greater distance than the air going by on the side. So if these air molecules want to meet up with their buddies, then they have to move faster than them if they want to catch up. And basically what happens is this creates a low pressure bubble all around the ball, so that even when I tilt the air stream like this, the ball is still rock solid. And it's this bubble that is holding the ball in place, or in other words, suspending it in midair. Now let's return to where I was in the process of coming up with ideas, because the truth is, I was very stuck. It seemed the only way to make the ball go higher was by increasing the amount of air coming out of the toy. But the problem with this is if you increase the air too much, it would end up blowing the ball away because it is very light. So if increasing the air won't work, then the ball would have to be supported by something. And that something would have to be invisible. But where in the world am I going to find something like that? And now is probably a time in the video where you would expect me to have some major revelation and see the answer to every problem and magically solve everything. Well, not today, because this story worked out a little differently. This time, the answers came from an unexpected source, which happened to be my older sister's magic kit. Now, my sister had gotten this magic kit quite a few years ago, and after some experimentation, she discovered that magic was just not her thing. And so knowing that I happened to have an extensive background in the art of magic, she decided to pass it down to me, which as you can imagine, immediately caught my attention. So then after only a few minutes of skimming through the instructions manual, I suddenly found the answers to all my engineering problems. There, printed on the top left-hand side of page 32, were the glorious words, the ultimate levitation system. So if I could figure out how magicians levitate objects, then I could use that technique to make the ball go higher than its natural height. And so with this brand new, life-changing info suddenly right at my fingertips, all I had to do was read the next couple of pages, gather the required supplies, and put it all together with a 10 second build montage. Now, when it comes to actually showing you guys the final build, sadly that is not possible. For as I'm sure you all know, magicians never reveal their secrets. Now keep in mind that I will be using a legit technique that professionals do use, and that this video is not rigged in any way. No green screens, no masking, no rotoscoping, compositing, and no other post-production special effects whatsoever. But if for some reason you're really itching to know how it is done, then I'm sure you can just Google it. And now, for the big reveal. <sighs> All right, let's see if this thing works. No way.
Thanks for watching.